Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is yet another video uh, in the series of videos on the pedigree analysis uh, in the last two videos I've told you about the uh, autosomal dominant inheritance uh, and their pedigree analysis and in this particular video I'll be focusing on the uh, pedigree analysis of the autosomal recessive inheritance so the first thing you need to understand is what is autosomal recessive inheritance so when you talk about this term autosomal so this term autosomal mean uh, that the gene in question uh, which is responsible for a particular genetic disorder that is located on one of the numbered chromosomes that is from chromosome number 1 through uh, 22 or you can simply say that the gene in question that will be located on the non-sex chromosome so they should not be present on the x or the y chromosome but it can be present on any other chromosome except the x and the y now this recessive mean that both copies of the disease associated mutation that are required to cause the disease because when you talk about the human beings uh, these uh, genes they usually come in pair so when uh, the i am representing the normal allele by a capital a and the diseased allele by a small a so if both the alleles uh, of a particular pair if they are normal that means that particular individual uh, would be normal and he or she is not going to express the uh, genetic disease now if you look at this particular example here one of the allele uh, in this particular pair is normal and the other one that is abnormal uh, and in this particular case as we discussed in the autosomal dominant so if this is the condition that particular individual for the autosomal dominant genetic disorder is expressing the uh, genetic disease but in case of the autosomal recessive inheritance in this particular case if one copy is normal the other copy is abnormal or the mutant allele the individual is uh, known as the carrier and they are phenotypically normal they usually do not represent the uh, symptoms of that particular genetic disorder so they are not called disease they are called as the carriers for a particular genetic disorder uh, the only time the uh, individual is going to express an autosomal recessive disease that if both of the copies of this uh, of a particular pair they are in their abnormal form as you can see over here this is small a this is small a so both of the member of these particular pair they are in the uh, muted form and they are the disease associated mutation form now what are the main features of the autosomal recessive inheritance so the first thing is that the male and females they are affected in the roughly equal proportions because when you talk about the uh, excellent inheritance that we will focus in the next video uh, in that particular cases you can actually uh, see an unequal distribution or an unequal proportion between the males and the female but when you talk about the autosomal the recessive one the males and the females they are affected in uh, roughly equal proportions now on average one fourth of the offsprings of two heterozygous carriers they will be affected with the genetic disorder and i'll show you the punnett square in a while uh, how the uh, two heterozygous carriers uh, they are uh, you can say having a chance of uh, 25 percent uh, of producing an offspring with that particular genetic disorder now men and women they are both able to pass on the condition to their sons and daughters uh, you can expect skipping of generation what I mean by skipping of generation is that there can be genetic disease in one generation now the second generation uh, you will find no individual in the disease form there can be carriers but there would be no disease in, in uh, no disease individual and in the uh, third generation again you can expect the, the individual with the genetic disorder so what the skipping of generation mean is that there can be uh, one generation or there can be two generation which are not showing the disease uh, but there can be other generation which are showing the uh, particular genetic disorder now consanguinity is present more often in pedigrees involving autosomal recessive diseases than in any other type of the uh, inheritance and what this term consanguinity mean is that there are cousin marriages and when there are cousin marriages uh, that is actually increasing the chances of the autosomal recessive genetic diseases so let us discuss about some of the important scenarios that you can actually see in the uh, autosomal recessive cases uh, I'm representing the normal allele by a capital A, the diseased allele by a small a. 
so if for example the mother is normal that mean uh, she is homozygous and both the copies of this particular pair they are in the uh, they are normal allele uh, the father is heterozygous that mean he is carrier he is phenotypically normal but the genotype that is heterozygous what i mean by that is that in this particular pair one allele is a normal one the other allele that is a diseased one so what you can expect in the offsprings so if you make the punnett square and these are the gametes of the mother uh, both of them they are normal that means that all of the gametes produced by the mother they should be carrying the uh, normal allele when you talk about the father as he is heterozygous that means that 50 percent of the gametes they would be carrying the normal allele 50 percent of the gametes that would be carrying the uh, abnormal or the diseased allele so if you look at the offsprings there are 50 percent chances that the offspring they would be normal as you can see over here uh, this capital a capital a capital a capital a but there are also 50 percent chances that the offspring they can be the carrier of course these uh, carriers they are not showing the uh, disease phenotype but they do have the ability to transfer this diseased allele to the uh, next generation so if one of the parent is normal the other one is heterozygous 50 percent of the uh, offspring they would be normal and 50 percent of the offspring that would be carrier now uh, if you take uh, both of the parents in the heterozygous condition like the mother is in the heterozygous condition so she would be a carrier of course she is phenotypically normal again the father is uh, uh, the father is carrier and he is in the heterozygous condition and he is phenotypically normal so what you can expect is that if these are the gametes of the mother that means 50 percent of the gametes would be carrying the uh, normal allele 50 percent that would be carrying the uh, diseased allele same would be the case with the father that 50 percent of the gametes would be uh, carrying the normal allele 50 percent of the gamete that would be carrying the uh, diseased allele so if you look at the offsprings like 25 percent like out of these four only one individual one offspring that is in the capital a capital a form that means that there are 25 percent chances that the offspring would be normal there are 50 percent chances as you can see over here this one and this one so out of four two individual they are in the heterozygous form so they would be carrier and they would be phenotypically normal but there are 25 percent chances that the offspring that would be in the affected form so uh, what i told you in the uh, uh, the properties of the uh, autosomal recessive inheritance that one fourth of the uh, individuals of two heterozygous parents they have 25 percent chances that means as you can see over here that one fourth of the individual of these two heterozygous parents uh, they will be uh, affected by a particular genetic disease so let us discuss about this uh, pedigree. Uh, now, the uh, solving the autosomal recessive pedigree but that is comparatively easy as compared to the other types of the uh, autosome or the other type of the uh, pedigree analysis. If you look at over here, uh, as I've told you, if you remember uh, the first video, in the first video I've told you that this sign, uh, this uh, square, is representing a male, but if the uh, the square is half shaded. That means that this particular male is carrier. And if this is unshaded, that means that that particular male is normal. And if that is fully shaded, that represents an affected male. So if you can see over here, that we can see that half of the square that is shaded, that means that this particular male is in the carrier form. And we know that the genotype of a carrier male in the uh, autosomal recessive inheritance is the heterozygous condition. That means one normal allele and one diseased allele. Uh, of course, this one uh, is the circle is showing a female and if this is unshaded, that means she is a normal carrier. Uh, she is a normal. She is not a carrier. She is normal. But uh, if this uh, circle is half shaded, that means that she is a carrier. And if this is fully shaded, that represents an affected female. So this means that this, this female or this mother, she would be normal. And the uh, only time she can be normal is that when both of the copies, they are in the capital A, capital A form or both of the alleles of this particular pair, they are normal. So what you can expect in the offspring is that if you look at the offspring of these uh, mother and father, uh, you are having a carrier individuals over here. This female is a carrier. This male is a carrier and this particular female, uh, she is in the uh, normal form. So let us make some Punnett square. 
we are sure that the uh, genotype of the mother is capital A, capital A. So, so all of the gametes that should be getting the capital A and the capital A allele. Uh, the father is in the heterozygous condition because he is a carrier. So the 50% of the gametes that would be getting the capital A allele, 50% that would be getting the small A allele. So when you cross them, as you can see over here, you can expect a normal individual and you can see over here, they have a uh, normal offspring. Uh, they, can, they can have the uh, carrier offsprings and that is very obvious from the given information that this uh, boy and this uh, girl, uh, they are carrier. So that means that the uh, these particular genotypes, you can expect these kind of the uh, offspring and that is very consistent with the uh, given data. So what would be the uh, genotypes of the offspring? Uh, this female, she would be carrier, so she would be heterozygous, capital A and a small a. Uh, she is going to be normal, so she will be capital A, capital A, and this male is uh, carrier, so uh, he would be heterozygous, that is capital A and the small a. Now, when you cross this uh, carrier female uh, with this uh, normal male over here, again, what you can expect is uh, the given information is that they have uh, a normal uh, female, a normal female offspring, a carrier female offspring, and uh, a carrier male. And this would be very much similar that we discussed that if one of the parent is heterozygous as you can see over here if the other parent is normal what you can expect is normal individual and the carrier individual and this one is a normal individual and these two they are the carrier individual so that satisfy the uh, given information so the genotype of this particular female would be capital a capital a she is carrier so she would be capital a and the small a and again, this male is a carrier, so he would be uh, capital A and the small a. Uh, if you cross this carrier male uh, with a normal female, so this would be the same condition that we just discussed, that you can expect the uh, carrier individuals, you can expect the uh, normal individual, and that is what this information is given to us, that they are having two offsprings, one normal female and one carrier female. So she would be carrier with a capital A and a small a, she would be normal with a capital A and uh, a capital A. Now, if you remember the signs and the symbol, as I've told you, that when there is a single line between the uh, male and the female, that is showing you the uh, mating that these two uh, male and the, the, the male and the female they are producing offsprings. But if there is a double line between a male and a female, a double horizontal line, that means that this is a cousin marriage. So this would be a, a cousin marriage. So as you can see over here, uh, this particular male in this particular cousin marriage, uh, he is uh, heterozygous. The female is also heterozygous. That means they are phenotypically normal. But when you look at the offsprings, you can actually expect the affected males over here and you can expect the affected females over here. Again, you can expect the normal male, you can expect the uh, carrier male, or you can expect the carrier female as well. So let us make some uh, uh, punnett squares over here. That if this parent is in the heterozygous condition, that means 50% of the gametes that would be carrying the capital A allele, 50% that would be carrying the small A allele or the diseased allele. Same would be true for this particular parent, that 50% of the uh, gametes that would be carrying the uh, capital A allele, 50% of the gametes that would be getting the uh, small A allele. So when you cross them, you can expect three kinds of the offsprings. One, the normal individual, you can expect normal offsprings, and that is very much obvious by this particular offspring, because these are the offspring of this particular couple. So you can expect the normal individual, and there is a normal individual of these parents. Again, you can expect the carrier ones over here, that means if you look at over here, there is a carrier male over here. But you can also expect the affected individuals. And that is very much obvious from uh, these two individuals over here, this affected male and uh, this affected female. So this is how uh, the uh, pedigree of an autosomal recessive uh, inheritance look like. So if you like the video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And in the next video, I'll be focusing on the X-linked dominant pedigree analysis.